it's Esther Braithwaite from Esther Joy Knits. And today we're continuing our series on how to make a charity doll. Today I'm going to be showing you how to stuff and finish your doll. If you've been following along, you've already knit the doll. In our last episode, I showed you how to seam up the back of a flat knitted doll. And now we're ready to go ahead and put the finishing touches on. For this segment, you're going to need your completed doll, a pair of scissors, a darning needle, a length of yarn in the same color that you used for the face, and whatever material you're going to use to stuff your doll. This is Eversoft polyester stuffing. You can use wool roving. Some people even use the tail ends of yarn um, or scraps or whatever it is that you want to use for your stuffing material. The first thing we need to do to finish our doll is to stuff the head. I like to stuff the head first because it gives a nice round shape to your head before you continue with your body. So using the same color of yarn as your face, we need to stitch a running stitch around the neck that we can cinch up to form the head. I start on the back and you can see the little jog here. Um, this is the doll that was worked in the round. You can see the little jog here, which is the middle back seam. And what I'm going to do is just slide my needle under one leg of each of the knit stitches in that first row around the face. You can see how each stitch is a V shape. And I'm just going to put my needle right under that right side of the V. And I'm going to do that for all 32 stitches right around the doll's neck. You want to leave a tail at the end. We're going to use that to sew up our arms. All right, so we've picked up one leg for each stitch all the way around. You can see we've got that running seam, but because we've kept those stitches small, it's gonna blend right into the fabric of our doll. The next thing we're going to do is stuff the head. I like to stuff the head nice and firmly. So just take a little bit of whatever stuffing material you're using And get it right down into the top of the head until you get the shape that you want for your doll. I like to uh, make the stuffing nice and firm, but not so much that I can see it coming through my knit stitches. And when I've got a nice firm shape, I just take these ends tie a knot and cinch them up tight to form the neck of my doll. And keeping that rather tightly, I'm going to double knot it. So that I keep that neck definition. Now, when you've been uh, tying off the neck, you may notice that some of your stuffing has kind of migrated down here to the shoulders. I take my fingers and I just tuck that back up underneath my cinching line. And that's gonna make a really nice definition between the head and the rest of the doll. Now it's time to stuff the body. And the technique is the same. This time we're going to pick up the tail from our cast on and use this to sew a running seam around the bottom of our feet. 
I want to get right down into the very last stitch here, my cast on stitch. And I'm going to pick up every other stitch. You can see it's kind of like a horizontal bar. We're going to pick up every other stitch all the way around the doll, keeping it as close to the edge of the doll as we can. And I like to overlap that bottom seam just to get a nice firm closure when we pull the feet tight. So just as we did with the head, we're going to stuff the body now. I like to keep the body of my doll a little bit looser than the head. We don't want it to have quite the same round shape. You can see on the finished doll how the body is a little narrower than the head shape. And you also want to be able to sew your doll up. I like to use my finger and make sure that I've got some definition up here for the, for the shoulders before I continue stuffing the rest of the doll. And then just as before, we're gonna pull the end of that running thread and that's going to finish up the bottom of our doll's feet. You're gonna to wanna to pull that nice and tight and you can see how it kind of puckers, but that's going to give you that nice rounded shape at the bottom of your feet. I know some people mentioned that they were getting a bit of a ridge here. If you keep your running stitch really close to the edge of those cast on stitches, you should get a nice, smooth seam at the bottom of the feet. I like to kind of compress the body of the doll into more of an oval shape before I begin sewing. And the next thing I'm going to do is use this tail that still has my needle attached to sew up the seam that gives the definition between the legs. So after I've pulled it tight, the first thing I wanna do is put a stitch right through both sides of the doll and give that a nice firm yank that's gonna close up the gap here. Our seam for the legs goes right up the middle. It's 16 stitches around to the front of the doll. In the round, you can see how we've got these little jogs from our color change, and that's gonna help us see where we need our middle seam to be on the back of the doll. If you've knit flat, you can use that seam line where you finish the doll to sort of help you get centered on the back of your doll as well. So I put my needle through and I wanna bring it out on the other side of my doll at the middle of the front. And because we've done the color work here, it's really easy. We've got these four black stitches in between the white of our socks. So I just make sure I'm one, two stitches over from my socks and pull my needle up. Now I'm not going to pull very tightly just yet. I'm gonna work a few stitches down and through to that center seam. And then back up again, using that sock as a guideline. As you get further up the doll, keeping your stitches a little bit loose will kind of give you this guide mark where you want your needle to come up again. 
So I can see that I'm keeping it right in line with that last black stitch. And you wanna give it a nice firm tug. That's gonna help create the definition that you wanna see, okay? And it's also gonna hide those stitches. Even though we're using a different color of yarn through the white, you can't see that I'm seaming with the black thread. So we're gonna continue on that way all the way up here to the first row of the bodice. And at this point, I just pick up a stitch here and tie a nice firm knot in my yarn. We're gonna leave that tail attached we're gonna come back to it when we embroider our face. So right now we can see that our legs have a nice definition to them now. And you can see that even though we had some jogs there in our color stripe when we were knitting in the round, that those get hidden when we do the seaming. We're gonna use the same technique to define the arms. I like to keep long tails when I stuff my neck and I use one on each side to define my arms. You're going to start your seam four stitches over from the middle of your doll. So I'm gonna count over one, two, three, four, and I'm just gonna bring my needle up about three stitches down from the neck. That's where I'm going to start my seam. So I'm going to bring my needle right through my doll. This time, we wanna count eight stitches in between our front and back seam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's where we're going to bring up our needle on the other side. And again, keeping that yarn loose will help you see where you need to come up with your subsequent stitches. So I do a couple of stitches, leaving that yarn loose for a guide. And then after I've got a couple of stitches going, I give it a nice firm tug and I can continue down that sort of ridge to make sure I stay on track with the remainder of my stitches. And again, when I finish that seam, I just pick up a stitch, finish it off with a knot, and I'm done with this tail now. I don't need this for any other seams. So what I like to do is sort of bury this tail inside the doll. I take my needle and I go down very close to that knot and bring it up <clears throat> on the other end of the doll. Give a firm tug. That's gonna hide that knot and while I've got a good bit of tension on this yarn, I'm gonna give it a snip and that's gonna cause it to shrink right back up inside the doll and hide that working end. We're gonna repeat the process on the other side of the doll. So we're gonna use our second tail. And just as we did before, we're going to count four stitches over from our center stitch, one, two, three, four. And our seams should be evenly spaced. We should have eight stitches across the back and eight stitches for both of the arms. 
So I count eight stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and bring my needle right through. And continue stitching up my arms exactly the same way as I had done on the other side. There. And now you've got your doll stuffed and sewn. And in the next episode, I'll show you how to embroider the face and finish off the hair.